Health insurance is an insurance that covers the whole or a part of the risk of a person incurring medical expenses, spreading the risk over a large number of persons. By estimating the overall risk of health care and health system expenses over the risk pool, an insurer can develop a routine finance structure, such as a monthly premium or payroll tax, to provide the money to pay for the health care benefits specified in the insurance agreement. The benefit is administered by a central organization such as a government agency, private business, or not-for-profit entity. According to the Health Insurance Association of America, health insurance is defined as coverage that provides for the payments of benefits as a result of sickness or injury. It includes insurance for losses from accident, medical expense, disability, or accidental death and dismemberment. p. 225. Topic. Background A health insurance policy is a contract between an insurance provider e an insurance company or a government and an individual or his, her sponsor e an employer or a community organization. The contract can be renewable e annually, monthly, or lifelong in the case of private insurance, or be mandatory for all citizens in the case of national plans. The type and amount of health care costs that will be covered by the health insurance provider are specified in writing, in a member contract or evidence of coverage booklet for private insurance, or in a national health policy for public insurance. U.S. specific provided by an employer-sponsored self-funded ERISA plan. The company generally advertises that they have one of the big insurance companies. However, in an ERISA case, that insurance company doesn't engage in the act of insurance. They just administer it. Therefore, ERISA plans are not subject to state laws. ERISA plans are governed by federal law under the jurisdiction of the U.S. Department of Labor The specific benefits or coverage details are found in the Summary Plan Description An appeal must go through the insurance company, then to the employer's plan fiduciary. If still required, the fiduciary's decision can be brought to the USDOL to review for ERISA compliance, and then file a lawsuit in federal court. The individual insured person's obligations may take several forms Premium the amount the policyholder or their sponsor e an employer, pays to the health plan to purchase health coverage. Deductible the amount that the insured must pay out of pocket before the health insurer pays its share. For example, policy holders might have to pay a $500 deductible per year, before any of their health care is covered by the health insurer. It may take several doctor's visits or prescription refills before the insured person reaches the deductible and the insurance company starts to pay for care. Furthermore, most policies do not apply co-pays for doctor's visits or prescriptions against your deductible. Co-payment, the amount that the insured person must pay out of pocket before the health insurer pays for a particular visit or service. For example, an insured person might pay a $45 co-payment for a doctor's visit, or to obtain a prescription. A co-payment must be paid each time a particular service is obtained. Coinsurance, instead of, or in addition to, paying a fixed amount up front a co-payment, the coinsurance is a percentage of the total cost that insured person may also pay. For example, the member might have to pay 20% of the cost of a surgery over and above a co-payment, while the insurance company pays the other 80%. If there is an upper limit on coinsurance, the policy holder could end up owing very little, or a great deal, depending on the actual costs of the services they obtain. Exclusions. Not all services are covered. Build items like use and throw, taxes, etc. are excluded from admissible claim. The insured are generally expected to pay the full cost of non-covered services out of their own pockets. Coverage limits. Some health insurance policies only pay for health care up to a certain dollar amount. The insured person may be expected to pay any charges in excess of the health plan's maximum payment for a specific service. In addition, some insurance company schemes have annual or lifetime coverage maxima. In these cases, the health plan will stop payment when they reach the benefit maximum, and the policy holder must pay all remaining costs. Out-of-pocket maximum, similar to coverage limits, except that in this case, the insured person's payment obligation ends when they reach the out-of-pocket maximum, and health insurance pays all further covered costs. Out-of-pocket maximum can be limited to a specific benefit category such as prescription drugs, or can apply to all coverage provided during a specific benefit year. 
capitation, an amount paid by an insurer to a health care provider, for which the provider agrees to treat all members of the insurer. In network provider, U.S. term. A health care provider on a list of providers preselected by the insurer. The insurer will offer discounted coinsurance or co-payments, or additional benefits, to a plan member to see an in-network provider. Generally, providers in network are providers who have a contract with the insurer to accept rates further discounted from the usual and customary charges the insurer pays to out of network providers. Prior authorization a certification or authorization that an insurer provides prior to medical service occurring. Obtaining an authorization means that the insurer is obligated to pay for the service, assuming it matches what was authorized. Many smaller, routine services do not require authorization. Explanation of benefits, a document that may be sent by an insurer to a patient explaining what was covered for a medical service, and how payment amount and patient responsibility amount were determined. Prescription drug plans are a form of insurance offered through some health insurance plans. In the U.S., the patient usually pays a copayment and the prescription drug insurance part or all of the balance for drugs covered in the formulary of the plan. Such plans are routinely part of national health insurance programs. For example, in the province of Quebec, Canada, prescription drug insurance is universally required as part of the public health insurance plan, but may be purchased and administered either through private or group plans, or through the public plan. Some, if not most, health care providers in the United States will agree to bill the insurance company if patients are willing to sign an agreement that they will be responsible for the amount that the insurance company doesn't pay. The insurance company pays out of network providers according to reasonable and customary charges, which may be less than the provider's usual fee. The provider may also have a separate contract with the insurer to accept what amounts to a discounted rate or capitation to the provider's standard charges. It generally costs the patient less to use an in-network provider. Topic. Comparisons. The Commonwealth Fund, in its annual survey, Mirror, Mirror on the Wall, compares the performance of the health care systems in Australia, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, Germany, Canada and the US. Its 2007 study found that, although the US system is the most expensive, it consistently underperforms compared to the other countries. One difference between the US and the other countries in the study is that the US is the only country without universal health insurance coverage. The Commonwealth Fund completed its 13th Annual Health Policy Survey in 2010. A study of the survey, "...found significant differences in access, cost burdens, and problems with health insurance that are associated with insurance design." Of the countries surveyed, the results indicated that people in the United States had more out-of-pocket expenses, more disputes with insurance companies than other countries, and more insurance payments denied. Paperwork was also higher although Germany had similarly high levels of paperwork. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Australia The Australian public health system is called Medicare, which provides free universal access to hospital treatment and subsidised out-of-hospital medical treatment. It is funded by a 2% tax levy on all taxpayers, an extra 1% levy on high-income earners, as well as general revenue. The private health system is funded by a number of private health insurance organisations. The largest of these is Medibank Private Limited, which was, until 2014, a government-owned entity, when it was privatised and listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. Australian health funds can be either for profit including Bupa and Nib, mutual including Australian Unity, or non-profit including GMHBA, HCF and the HBF Health Fund HBF. Some, such as Police Health, have membership restricted to particular groups, but the majority have open membership. Membership to most health funds is now also available through comparison websites like MoneyTime, Compare the Market, iSelect Limited, Choosy, Comparing Expert and YouCompare. These comparison sites operate on a commission basis by agreement with their participating health funds. The private health insurance ombudsman also operates a free website which allows consumers to search for and compare private health insurers' products, which includes information on price and level of cover. Most aspects of private health insurance in Australia are regulated by the Private Health Insurance Act 2007. 
complaints and reporting of the private health industry is carried out by an independent government agency, the Private Health Insurance Ombudsman. The Ombudsman publishes an annual report that outlines the number and nature of complaints per health fund compared to their market share. The private health system in Australia operates on a community rating basis, whereby premiums do not vary solely because of a person's previous medical history, current state of health, or generally speaking, their age, but see lifetime health cover below. Balancing this are waiting periods, in particular for pre-existing conditions, usually referred to within the industry as P, which stands for pre-existing ailment. Funds are entitled to impose a waiting period of up to 12 months on benefits for any medical condition the signs and symptoms of which existed during the six months ending on the day the person first took out insurance. They are also entitled to impose a 12-month waiting period for benefits for treatment relating to an obstetric condition, and a two-month waiting period for all other benefits when a person first takes out private insurance. Funds have the discretion to reduce or remove such waiting periods in individual cases. They are also free not to impose them to begin with, but this would place such a fund at risk of adverse selection, attracting a disproportionate number of members from other funds, or from the pool of intending members who might otherwise have joined other funds. It would also attract people with existing medical conditions, who might not otherwise have taken out insurance at all because of the denial of benefits for 12 months due to the P rule. The benefits paid out for these conditions would create pressure on premiums for all the fund's members, causing some to drop their membership, which would lead to further rises in premiums, and a vicious cycle of higher premiums leaving members would ensue. The Australian government has introduced a number of incentives to encourage adults to take out private hospital insurance. These include Lifetime health cover – If a person has not taken out private hospital cover by 1 July after their 31st birthday, then when and if they do so after this time, their premiums must include a loading of 2% per annum for each year they were without hospital cover. Thus, a person taking out private cover for the first time at age 40 will pay a 20% loading. The loading is removed after 10 years of continuous hospital cover. The loading applies only to premiums for hospital cover, not to ancillary extras cover. Medicare levy surcharge – People whose taxable income is greater than a specified amount in the 2011-12 financial year $80,000 for singles and $168,000 for couples and who do not have an adequate level of private hospital cover must pay a 1% surcharge on top of the standard 1.5% Medicare levy. The rationale is that if the people in this income group are forced to pay more money one way or another, most would choose to purchase hospital insurance with it, with the possibility of a benefit in the event that they need private hospital treatment, rather than pay it in the form of extra tax as well as having to meet their own private hospital costs. The Australian government announced in May 2008 that it proposes to increase the thresholds, to $100,000 for singles and $150,000 for families. These changes require legislative approval. A bill to change the law has been introduced but was not passed by the Senate. An amended version was passed on 16 October 2008. There have been criticisms that the changes will cause many people to drop their private health insurance, causing a further burden on the public hospital system, and a rise in premiums for those who stay with the private system. Other commentators believe the effect will be minimal. Private health insurance rebate – The government subsidizes the premiums for all private health insurance cover, including hospital and ancillary extras, by 10%, 20% or 30%, depending on age. The Rudd government announced in May 2009 that as of July 2010, the rebate would become means-tested, and offered on a sliding scale. While this move which would have required legislation was defeated in the Senate at the time, in early 2011 the Gillard government announced plans to reintroduce the legislation after the opposition loses the balance of power in the Senate. The ALP and Greens have long been against the rebate, referring to it as middle-class welfare. <laughs> Canada As per the Constitution of Canada, health care is mainly a provincial government responsibility in Canada the main exceptions being federal government responsibility for services provided to Aboriginal peoples covered by treaties, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the Armed Forces, and Members of Parliament. Consequently, each province administers its own health insurance program. 
The federal government influences health insurance by virtue of its fiscal powers, it transfers cash and tax points to the provinces to help cover the costs of the universal health insurance programs. Under the Canada Health Act, the federal government mandates and enforces the requirement that all people have free access to what are termed, "...medically necessary services", defined primarily as care delivered by physicians or in hospitals, and the nursing component of long-term residential care. If provinces allow doctors or institutions to charge patients for medically necessary services, the federal government reduces its payments to the provinces by the amount of the prohibited charges. Collectively, the public provincial health insurance systems in Canada are frequently referred to as Medicare. This public insurance is tax funded out of general government revenues, although British Columbia and Ontario levy a mandatory premium with flat rates for individuals and families to generate additional revenues, in essence, a surtax. Private health insurance is allowed, but in six provincial governments only for services that the public health plans do not cover for example, semi-private or private rooms in hospitals and prescription drug plans. Four provinces allow insurance for services also mandated by the Canada Health Act, but in practice there is no market for it. All Canadians are free to use private insurance for elective medical services such as laser vision correction surgery, cosmetic surgery, and other non-basic medical procedures. Some 65% of Canadians have some form of supplementary private health insurance, many of them receive it through their employers. Private sector services not paid for by the government account for nearly 30% of total health care spending. In 2005, the Supreme Court of Canada ruled, in Cherley v. Quebec, that the province's prohibition on private insurance for health care already insured by the provincial plan violated the Quebec Charter of Rights and Freedoms, and in particular the sections dealing with the right to life and security, if there were unacceptably long wait times for treatment, as was alleged in this case. The ruling has not changed the overall pattern of health insurance across Canada, but has spurred on attempts to tackle the core issues of supply and demand and the impact of wait times. Topic: <laughs> China. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> France. The national system of health insurance was instituted in 1945, just after the end of the Second World War. It was a compromise between Gaullist and Communist representatives in the French Parliament. The conservative Gaullists were opposed to a state-run healthcare system, while the Communists were supportive of a complete nationalisation of health care along a British beverage model. The resulting program is profession-based, all people working are required to pay a portion of their income to a not-for-profit health insurance fund, which mutualizes the risk of illness, and which reimburses medical expenses at varying rates. Children and spouses of insured people are eligible for benefits, as well. Each fund is free to manage its own budget, and used to reimburse medical expenses at the rate it saw fit, however following a number of reforms in recent years, the majority of funds provide the same level of reimbursement and benefits. The government has two responsibilities in this system. The first government responsibility is the fixing of the rate at which medical expenses should be negotiated, and it does so in two ways. The Ministry of Health directly negotiates prices of medicine with the manufacturers, based on the average price of sale observed in neighboring countries. A board of doctors and experts decides if the medicine provides a valuable enough medical benefit to be reimbursed. Note that most medicine is reimbursed, including homeopathy. In parallel, the government fixes the reimbursement rate for medical services, this means that a doctor is free to charge the fee that he wishes for a consultation or an examination, but the social security system will only reimburse it at a pre-set rate. These tariffs are set annually through negotiation with doctors' representative organizations. The second government responsibility is oversight of the health insurance funds, to ensure that they are correctly managing the sums they receive, and to ensure oversight of the public hospital network. Today, this system is more or less intact. All citizens and legal foreign residents of France are covered by one of these mandatory programs, which continue to be funded by worker participation. However, since 1945, a number of major changes have been introduced. Firstly, the different health care funds there are five, general, independent, agricultural, student, public servants now all reimburse at the same rate. Secondly, since 2000, the government now provides health care to those who are not covered by a mandatory regime those who have never worked and who are not students, meaning the very rich or the very poor. 
This regime, unlike the worker-financed ones, is financed via general taxation and reimburses at a higher rate than the profession-based system for those who cannot afford to make up the difference. Finally, to counter the rise in health care costs, the government has installed two plans, in 2004 and 2006, which require insured people to declare a referring doctor in order to be fully reimbursed for specialist visits, and which installed a mandatory co-pay of €1 Euro for a doctor visit, €0.50 cents for each box of medicine prescribed, and a fee of €16.18 per day for hospital stays and for expensive procedures. An important element of the French insurance system is solidarity, the more ill a person becomes, the less the person pays. This means that for people with serious or chronic illnesses, the insurance system reimburses them 100% of expenses, and waives their co-pay charges. Finally, for fees that the mandatory system does not cover, there is a large range of private complementary insurance plans available. The market for these programs is very competitive, and often subsidized by the employer, which means that premiums are usually modest. 85% of French people benefit from complementary private health insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Germany Germany has the world's oldest national social health insurance system, with origins dating back to Otto von Bismarck's sickness insurance law of 1883. Beginning with 10% of blue collar workers in 1885, mandatory insurance has expanded. In 2009, insurance was made mandatory on all citizens, with private health insurance for the self employed or above an income threshold. As of 2016, 85% of the population is covered by the compulsory statutory health insurance or GKV, with the remainder covered by private insurance private or PKV. .Germany's health care system was 77% government funded and 23% privately funded as of 2004. While public health insurance contributions are based on the individual's income, private health insurance contributions are based on the individual's age and health condition. Reimbursement is on a fee for service basis, but the number of physicians allowed to accept statutory health insurance in a given locale is regulated by the government and professional societies. Co payments were introduced in the 1980s in an attempt to prevent overutilization. The average length of hospital stay in Germany has decreased in recent years from 14 days to 9 days, still considerably longer than average stays in the United States 5 to 6 days. Part of the difference is that the chief consideration for hospital reimbursement is the number of hospital days as opposed to procedures or diagnosis. Drug costs have increased substantially, rising nearly 60% from 1991 through 2005. Despite attempts to contain costs, overall health care expenditures rose to 10.7% of GDP in 2005, comparable to other Western European nations, but substantially less than that spent in the US, nearly 16% of GDP. Germans are offered three kinds of social security insurance dealing with the physical status of a person and which are co-financed by employer and employee, health insurance, accident insurance, and long-term care insurance. Long-term care insurance emerged in 1994 and is mandatory. Accident insurance is covered by the employer and basically covers all risks for commuting to work and at the workplace. India In India, provision of health care services varies state-wise. Public health services are prominent in most of the states, but due to inadequate resources and management, major population opts for private health services. To improve the awareness and better health care facilities, Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India and the General Corporation of India runs health care campaigns for the whole population. In 2018, for underprivileged citizens, Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced the launch of a new health insurance called Modicare and the government claims that the new system will try to reach more than 500 million people. In India, health insurance is offered mainly in two types. Indemnity plan basically covers the hospitalization expenses and has subtypes like individual insurance, family floater insurance, senior citizen insurance, maternity insurance, group medical insurance. Fixed benefit plan pays a fixed amount for pre-decided diseases like critical illness, cancer, heart disease, etc. 
It has also its subtypes like preventive insurance, critical illness, personal accident, depending on the type of insurance and the company providing health insurance. Coverage includes pre and post hospitalization charges, ambulance charges, daycare charges, health checkups, etc. It is pivotal to know about the exclusions which are not covered under insurance schemes treatment related to dental disease or surgeries, all kind of STDs and AIDS. Non allopathic treatment. Few of the companies do provide insurance against such diseases or conditions, but that depends on the type and the insured amount. Some important aspects to be considered before choosing the health insurance in India are claim settlement ratio, insurance limits and caps, coverage, and network hospitals. <laughs> Japan There are two major types of insurance programs available in Japan, Employees Health Insurance and National Health Insurance National Health Insurance is designed for people who are not eligible to be members of any employment-based health insurance program. Although private health insurance is also available, all Japanese citizens, permanent residents, and non-Japanese with a visa lasting one year or longer are required to be enrolled in either national health insurance or employees health insurance. <laughs> Netherlands In 2006, a new system of health insurance came into force in the Netherlands. This new system avoids the two pitfalls of adverse selection and moral hazard associated with traditional forms of health insurance by using a combination of regulation and an insurance equalization pool. Moral hazard is avoided by mandating that insurance companies provide at least one policy which meets a government set minimum standard level of coverage, and all adult residents are obliged by law to purchase this coverage from an insurance company of their choice. All insurance companies receive funds from the equalization pool to help cover the cost of this government-mandated coverage. This pool is run by a regulator which collects salary-based contributions from employers, which make up about 50% of all health care funding, and funding from the government to cover people who cannot afford health care, which makes up an additional 5%. The remaining 45% of health care funding comes from insurance premiums paid by the public, for which companies compete on price, though the variation between the various competing insurers is only about 5%. However, insurance companies are free to sell additional policies to provide coverage beyond the national minimum. These policies do not receive funding from the equalization pool, but cover additional treatments, such as dental procedures and physiotherapy, which are not paid for by the mandatory policy. Funding from the equalization pool is distributed to insurance companies for each person they insure under the required policy. However, high-risk individuals get more from the pool, and low-income persons and children under 18 have their insurance paid for entirely. Because of this, insurance companies no longer find insuring high-risk individuals an unappealing proposition, avoiding the potential problem of adverse selection. Insurance companies are not allowed to have co-payments, caps, or deductibles, or to deny coverage to any person applying for a policy, or to charge anything other than their nationally set and published standard premiums. Therefore, every person buying insurance will pay the same price as everyone else buying the same policy, and every person will get at least the minimum level of coverage. <laughs> <laughs> New Zealand Since 1974, New Zealand has had a system of universal no-fault health insurance for personal injuries through the Accident Compensation Corporation the ACC scheme covers most of the costs of related to treatment of injuries acquired in New Zealand including overseas visitors regardless of how the injury occurred, and also covers lost income at 80% of the employee's pre-injury income and costs related to long-term rehabilitation, such as home and vehicle modifications for those seriously injured. Funding from the scheme comes from a combination of levies on employers' payroll for work injuries, levies on an employee's taxable income for non-work injuries to salary earners, levies on vehicle licensing fees and petrol for motor vehicle accidents, and funds from the general taxation pool for non-work injuries to children, senior citizens, unemployed people, overseas visitors, etc. Rwanda. 
Rwanda is one of a handful of low-income countries that has implemented community-based health insurance schemes in order to reduce the financial barriers that prevent poor people from seeking and receiving needed health services. This scheme has helped reach 90% of the country's population with health care coverage. Switzerland Healthcare in Switzerland is universal and is regulated by the Swiss Federal Law on Health Insurance. Health insurance is compulsory for all persons residing in Switzerland within three months of taking up residence or being born in the country. It is therefore the same throughout the country and avoids double standards in healthcare. Insurers are required to offer this basic insurance to everyone, regardless of age or medical condition. They are not allowed to make a profit off this basic insurance, but can on supplemental plans. The universal compulsory coverage provides for treatment in case of illness or accident and pregnancy. Health insurance covers the costs of medical treatment, medication, and hospitalization of the insured. However, the insured person pays part of the costs up to a maximum, which can vary based on the individually chosen plan. Premiums are then adjusted accordingly. The whole healthcare system is geared towards to the general goals of enhancing general public health and reducing costs while encouraging individual responsibility. The Swiss healthcare system is a combination of public, subsidized private and totally private systems. Insurance premiums vary from insurance company to company, the excess level individually chosen franchise, the place of residence of the insured person and the degree of supplementary benefit coverage chosen complementary medicine, routine dental care, semi-private or private ward hospitalization, etc. The insured person has full freedom of choice among the approximately 60 recognized healthcare providers competent to treat their condition in their region on the understanding that the costs are covered by the insurance up to the level of the official tariff. There is freedom of choice when selecting an insurance company to which one pays a premium, usually on a monthly basis. The insured person pays the insurance premium for the basic plan up to 8% of their personal income. If a premium is higher than this, the government gives the insured person a cash subsidy to pay for any additional premium. The compulsory insurance can be supplemented by private, complementary, insurance policies that allow for coverage of some of the treatment categories not covered by the basic insurance or to improve the standard of room and service in case of hospitalization. This can include complementary medicine, routine dental treatment and private ward hospitalization, which are not covered by the compulsory insurance. As far as the compulsory health insurance is concerned, the insurance companies cannot set any conditions relating to age, sex or state of health for coverage. Although the level of premium can vary from one company to another, they must be identical within the same company for all insured persons of the same age group and region, regardless of sex or state of health. This does not apply to complementary insurance, where premiums are risk-based. Switzerland has an infant mortality rate of about 3.6 out of 1,000. The general life expectancy in 2012 was for men 80.5 years compared to 84.7 years for women. These are the world's best figures. United Kingdom The UK's National Health Service NHS is a publicly funded healthcare system that provides coverage to everyone normally resident in the UK. It is not strictly an insurance system because a, there are no premiums collected, b, costs are not charged at the patient level and c, costs are not prepaid from a pool. However, it does achieve the main aim of insurance which is to spread financial risk arising from ill health. The costs of running the NHS est. £104 billion in 2007 8 are met directly from general taxation. The NHS provides the majority of health care in the UK, including primary care, inpatient care, long-term health care, ophthalmology, and dentistry. Private health care has continued parallel to the NHS, paid for largely by private insurance, but it is used by less than 8% of the population, and generally as a top-up to NHS services. There are many treatments that the private sector does not provide. For example, health insurance on pregnancy is generally not covered or covered with restricting clauses. Typical exclusions for BUPA schemes and many other insurers include 
aging, menopause and puberty, AIDS, HIV, allergies or allergic disorders, birth control, conception, sexual problems and sex changes, chronic conditions, complications from excluded or restricted conditions, treatment, convalescence, rehabilitation and general nursing care, cosmetic, reconstructive or weight loss treatment, deafness, dental, oral treatment such as fillings, gum disease, jaw shrinkage, etc., dialysis, drugs and dressings for outpatient or take-home use, experimental drugs and treatment, eyesight, HRT and bone densitometry, learning difficulties, behavioral and developmental problems, overseas treatment and repatriation, physical aids and devices, pre-existing or special conditions, pregnancy and childbirth, screening and preventive treatment, sleep problems and disorders, speech disorders, temporary relief of symptoms. Except in exceptional circumstances. There are a number of other companies in the United Kingdom which include, among others, Ace Limited, AXA, Aviva, Bupa, Groupama Healthcare, WPA and Pruhealth. Similar exclusions apply, depending on the policy which is purchased. In 2009, the main representative body of British medical physicians, the British Medical Association, adopted a policy statement expressing concerns about developments in the health insurance market in the UK. In its annual representative meeting which had been agreed earlier by the consultants policy group i.e. senior physicians stating that the BMA was extremely concerned that the policies of some private healthcare insurance companies are preventing or restricting patients exercising choice about I the consultants who treat them I I the hospital at which they are treated I I I making top up payments to cover any gap between the funding provided by their insurance company and the cost of their chosen private treatment it went into call on the BMA to publicize these concerns so that patients are fully informed when making choices about private healthcare insurance. The practice of insurance companies deciding which consultant a patient may see as opposed to GPs or patients is referred to as open referral. The NHS offers patients a choice of hospitals and consultants and does not charge for its services. The private sector has been used to increase NHS capacity despite a large proportion of the British public opposing such involvement. According to the World Health Organization, government funding covered 86% of overall health care expenditures in the UK as of 2004, with private expenditures covering the remaining 14%. Nearly one in three patients receiving NHS hospital treatment is privately insured and could have the cost paid for by their insurer. Some private schemes provide cash payments to patients who opt for NHS treatment, to deter use of private facilities. A report, by private health analysts Lang and Busson, in November 2012, estimated that more than 250,000 operations were performed on patients with private medical insurance each year at a cost of £359 million. In addition, £609 million was spent on emergency medical or surgical treatment. Private medical insurance does not normally cover emergency treatment but subsequent recovery could be paid for if the patient were moved into a private patient unit. <laughs> United States Short-term health insurance on 1 August, 2018 the DHHS issued a final rule which made federal changes to short-term, limited-duration health insurance which lengthened the maximum contract term to 364 days and renewal for up to 36 months. This new rule, in combination with the expiration of the penalty for the individual mandate of the Affordable Care Act, has been the subject of independent analysis. The United States health care system relies heavily on private health insurance, which is the primary source of coverage for most Americans. As of 2012, about 61% of Americans had private health insurance, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality AHRQ found that in 2011, private insurance was billed for 12.2 million U.S. inpatient hospital stays and incurred approximately $112.5 billion in aggregate inpatient hospital costs 29% of the total national aggregate costs. Public programs provide the primary source of coverage for most senior citizens and for low-income children and families who meet certain eligibility requirements. The primary public programs are Medicare, a federal social insurance program for seniors and certain disabled individuals, and Medicaid, funded jointly by the federal government and states but administered at the state level, which covers certain very low-income children and their families. 
Together, Medicare and Medicaid accounted for approximately 63% of the national inpatient hospital costs in 2011. SCHIP is a federal state partnership that serves certain children and families who do not qualify for Medicaid but who cannot afford private coverage. Other public programs include military health benefits provided through TRICARE and the Veterans Health Administration and benefits provided through the Indian Health Service. Some states have additional programs for low income individuals. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, health advocacy companies began to appear to help patients deal with the complexities of the healthcare system. The complexity of the healthcare system has resulted in a variety of problems for the American public. A study found that 62% of persons declaring bankruptcy in 2007 had unpaid medical expenses of $1,000 or more, and in 92% of these cases the medical debts exceeded $5,000. Nearly 80% who filed for bankruptcy had health insurance. The Medicare and Medicaid programs were estimated to soon account for 50% of all national health spending. These factors and many others fueled interest in an overhaul of the health care system in the United States. In 2010 President Obama signed into law the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. This act includes an individual mandate that every American must have medical insurance or pay a fine. Health policy experts such as David Cutler and Jonathan Gruber, as well as the American medical insurance lobby group America's Health Insurance Plans, argued this provision was required in order to provide guaranteed issue and a community rating which address unpopular features of America's health insurance system such as premium weightings, exclusions for pre-existing conditions, and the pre-screening of insurance applicants. During 26–28 March, the Supreme Court heard arguments regarding the validity of the Act. The Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act was determined to be constitutional on 28 June 2012. The Supreme Court determined that Congress had the authority to apply the individual mandate within its taxing powers. History and evolution In the late 19th century, accident insurance began to be available, which operated much like modern disability insurance. This payment model continued until the start of the 20th century in some jurisdictions like California, where all laws regulating health insurance actually referred to disability insurance. Accident insurance was first offered in the United States by the Franklin Health Assurance Company of Massachusetts. This firm, founded in 1850, offered insurance against injuries arising from railroad and steamboat accidents. Sixty organizations were offering accident insurance in the U.S. by 1866, but the industry consolidated rapidly soon thereafter. While there were earlier experiments, the origins of sickness coverage in the U.S. effectively date from 1890. The first employer-sponsored group disability policy was issued in 1911. Before the development of medical expense insurance, patients were expected to pay health care costs out of their own pockets, under what is known as the fee-for-service business model. During the middle to late 20th century, traditional disability insurance evolved into modern health insurance programs. One major obstacle to this development was that early forms of comprehensive health insurance were enjoined by courts for violating the traditional ban on corporate practice of the professions by for-profit corporations. State legislatures had to intervene and expressly legalize health insurance as an exception to that traditional rule. Today, most comprehensive private health insurance programs cover the cost of routine, preventive, and emergency health care procedures, and most prescription drugs but this is not always the case. Hospital and medical expense policies were introduced during the first half of the 20th century. During the 1920s, individual hospitals began offering services to individuals on a prepaid basis, eventually leading to the development of Blue Cross organizations. The predecessors of today's health maintenance organizations HMOs originated beginning in 1929, through the 1930s and on during World War II. The Employee Retirement Income Security Act of 1974 ERISA regulated the operation of a health benefit plan if an employer chooses to establish one, which is not required. The Consolidated Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act of 1985 gives an ex-employee the right to continue coverage under an employer-sponsored group health benefit plan. Through the 1990s, managed care insurance schemes including health maintenance organizations HMO, preferred provider organizations, or point-of-service plans grew from about 25% U.S. employees with employer-sponsored coverage to the vast majority. 
With managed care, insurers use various techniques to address costs and improve quality, including negotiation of prices in network providers, utilization management, and requirements for quality assurance such as being accredited by accreditation schemes such as the Joint Commission and the American Accreditation Healthcare Commission. Employers and employees may have some choice in the details of plans, including health savings accounts, deductible, and coinsurance. As of 2015, a trend has emerged for employers to offer high deductible plans, called consumer driven healthcare plans, which place more costs on employees. Some employers will offer multiple plans to their employees. Russia See also